I am Xavier Salomon. I'm a trustee of Save Venice and a member of the projects committee. And I'm also the chief curator at the Frick Collection in New York. And I would like today to talk about my favorite current restoration project with Save Venice, which is the Magnificent Lion of St. Mark by Vittore Carpaccio, which hangs in the Doge's Palace at the heart of Venice in the most visited museum in the city. This has been very recently adopted by Richard and Jill Almeida, and we're incredibly happy that we're going to begin working on this very, very soon. Now, I've chosen this partly because it is the symbol of our organization. Save Venice, from its foundation, chose as a symbol the Lion of St. Mark, the, the symbol of Venice itself. But also because I am very interested in the artist, in Vittore Carpaccio, who is a marvelous Venetian painter. Now, when we think of um, 15th, 16th century painters active in Venice, uh, we don't usually think of the fact that many of them were not actually born in Venice. So when we think of the great Giorgione or Paolo Veronese or even Titian, um, we think of them as Venetian, but they were all born outside of the city. Carpaccio instead was from Venice and his family came from the little island of Mazzorbo, which is close to Burano and halfway more or less between uh, Murano and Torcello. And he was born in Venice around 1465 and spent all of his life there, dying in Venice around 1525. Now, when we think of Carpaccio, we tend to think of his large narrative scenes that he painted for the lay confraternities of Venice, for the scuole. And when I think of Carpaccio, I tend to think of this because working on Paolo Veronese, as I've done for most of my life, um, I often think of how much Veronese was indebted to the example of Carpaccio. Say Venice has worked on a number of Carpaccio projects over the years. And just to give you an example of some of the most recent ones, uh, we recently, last year, finished the restoration of the huge cycle of canvases of the life of St. Ursula, which was done for the Scuola di Sant'Orsola, which doesn't exist anymore. And they're now in a beautiful large room in the Galleria dell'Accademia in Venice. So this is a team of restorers at work on it. And um, here is the inauguration last year of the room in all its splendor. Most recently, we started working on another Scuola canvas, the Miracle uh, at Rialto, which was painted originally for the Scuola di San Giovanni Evangelista, and it's now also at the Academia, and work is very much ongoing on that. And finally, the project that I'm also very interested in and, and love is the Scuola Dalmata. This is this beautiful small confraternity, still pretty much intact, um, one of the secret gems of Venice. And if you look at this, this image and you look around this room on the ground floor of the Scuola, you see that all of the canvases around um, its perimeter were painted by Carpaccio. These um, are now being worked on. Here are people moving the first canvas, the calling of St. Matthew. Uh, here is one of the restorers, Valentina Piovan, working on this canvas, which has now been finished and work is ongoing on another canvas and we'll be able to do soon uh, the entire cycle. Now Carpaccio will be the focus on of a couple of exhibitions um, across the Atlantic between Venice and America uh, in the next few years. It's going to be the subject of a number of publications that say Venice is involved with. But so why am I focusing on the lion? I think it's an incredible work of art. It's this large life-size lion um, and it shows, as I said at the beginning, the symbol of the evangelist Mark and Venice itself. So why a winged lion? This is uh, linked to two biblical passages. In the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament, the prophet Ezekiel had a vision where four winged creatures, uh, a human, uh, a lion, an ox, and an eagle, all of, all of which were winged, um, appeared to him in the sky. And later in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, these same four creatures reappear. And from the very early um, phase of Christianity, these were associated with the four evangelists. So uh, the angel is linked to St. Matthew, the, the winged lion to Mark, the winged ox to Luke, and the eagle with John. But why Venice? And when you look at this lion, or you look at any lion in Venice, and they appear pretty much everywhere, you realize that the lion is holding a book. And the book has an inscription in Latin which says, Pax tibi marce evangelista meus. 
Now, this is part of a Latin sentence which is linked to another legend. And when St. Mark uh, was traveling around Europe preaching, he stopped on a little island in the lagoon, and this is long before Venice existed, and there he had a vision. An angel appeared to him saying these words, which mean, peace be with thee, Mark, my evangelist. And subsequently, the angel foretells Mark that he will be buried eventually in Venice. This is, of course, a premonition of what will happen in 828, a fundamental date for the history of Venice, when Venetian men bring back the relics of St. Mark, who had been martyred and, and buried in Alexandria in Egypt. They bring these relics back to Venice. And of course, since then, uh, the body of St. Mark, the relics of St. Mark, are the central focal point of the Basilica of St. Mark in Venice. And since then, of course, Mark becomes the patron saint of the city. This lion was painted by Carpaccio following many other examples. And I always think of its link to the great bronze lion that is placed on top of one of the columns in the Piazzetta of San Marco. And of course, what I love about these creatures is that they somewhat don't look like a real lion. Um, I don't suspect there were a lot of uh, living lions hanging around Venice, but they become this sort of half human, half animal, half fantasy um, sort of creatures. And they're immediately recognizable and, and, as I said, visible all over Venice. This specific lion, the Carpaccio one, was, uh, was painted in 1516. It's signed and dated in the left corner. Um, and for a long time, it was believed to have been painted for the Palazzo dei Camerlenghi, the treasury of, of Venice. Uh, we now know, thanks to recent research, uh, that it was actually made for a different civic institution, for the Dazio del Vin, uh, which was uh, the tax office to do with wine. And we know it was commissioned by three, sorry, five officers of the Dazio del Vino, um, whose coat of arms appear at the bottom. And if you look at the bottom from left to right, uh, you can identify the families. And we know that these individuals were Anastasio Sagredo, Jacopo Venier, Marcantonio Manolesso, Girolamo Bragadin, and Francesco Foscarini. The lion stands with its front paws on the mainland, its back paws, its rear paws in the sea. And this is something that appears often in Venetian depictions of the lion because it represents the dominion of Venice, of the Serenissima, over the land and over the sea. And of course, we think of Venice as a mercantile maritime power, but around this time, 1516, is at a time when uh, the possession of Venetian mainland territories, the so-called terra firma, is very much at stake, and Venice is fighting to regain many of its territories. In the 16th century, at its maximum expansion, the Venetian uh, Republic owned land all the way into what is today Lombardy, and all the way down the Adriatic coast to, uh, to even Greece. I love the landscape in this painting. Um, in the background to the right, you look at the lagoon towards the Lido, and there are these ships and these wonderful ships that are leaving, heading to unknown, far distant lands, and coming back um, from Egypt, from the Middle East, from uh, Constantinople, bringing back textiles and spices and precious materials and metal, um, which of course made Venice into the great center it was in the 16th century. But on the left, instead, you get a portrait of the city itself. Uh, there's the Doge's Palace, there is the Basilica of St. Mark's, you see the domes, and you see the Campanile, the bell tower, which had just recently been finished. So here is the symbol of Venice at the heart of Venice. But the other detail that I really love about this is the fact that the lion is standing on an island with vegetation. And this, in theory, should be more or less where San Giorgio Maggiore is today, the island of San Giorgio. To get the, this sort of view onto the Bacino and towards the Doge's Palace, you need to be somewhere there. But of course, this is not the island of San Giorgio. It's a made up um, piece of land. And Carpaccio is a wonderful painter of plants and animals. Uh, we don't often think of that, but if you start looking at all his great narrative scenes, you see so many details of these wonderful plants, some of which are real, some of which are fantasy. Um, and I just find them so elegant and beautiful. So I cannot wait for this picture to be, to be restored and to reappear in all its glory, the great symbol of Venice, the roaring lion of St. Mark. And um, if you all want to help Save Venice and uh, be involved with us more, please visit our website at savevenice.org. And there are many ways you can be, be involved and help us support Venice, help us um, preserve the heritage of this incredible site and city. Thank you very much.